Good day, everyone. It is our pleasure to be part of this year's International Conference in Innovation and Education, hosted by its prestigious Open University in Thailand. And it is indeed an honor for us to present in this global platform our research study titled English Language Proficiency Curricula in Southeast Asian Countries. Being proficient in the English language brings a number of global advantages. And so, English language proficiency has become one of our most primary concerns. Aligned with this, an organization known as Education First, or EF, yearly measures the English language proficiency of different countries. The globally published result is known as the EF English Proficiency Index, or EFEPI, in which almost all of the countries in Southeast Asia annually participate. Considering the annual results of EFEPI, we have observed that there are Southeast Asian countries which are able to maintain their high or very high proficiency in the language. However, it is also notable that there are countries in Southeast Asia which have been in the low or very low proficiency bands over the course of years. Hence, we the researchers decided to conduct this study examining the English language proficiency curricula among the Southeast Asian countries. Specifically, we sought to answer the following questions. One, how may the English language proficiency level of Southeast Asian countries be described based on the EF English Proficiency Index 2021? Two, what observations can be seen in the English education curricula among the Southeast Asian countries? Three, what are the other significant features of curricula in Southeast Asian countries which contribute in producing citizens with high English proficiency level? In this study, we mainly base our data and conclusions on the results of EFEPI 2021, anchored on the, on the theory of Bradley about effectiveness model for curriculum development indicators, we examined the curricula implement, implemented at least five years back since the data of EFEPI 2021 were likely the result of an English curriculum implemented by a certain country at least five years ago. To gather the data from this study, the researchers used the data mining approach. For the results of the study, you can now see on your screen a table which shows the result of EFEPI of Southeast Asian countries in 2021. Singapore possessed a very high level of English proficiency, Philippines and Malaysia with high level of proficiency, Vietnam and Indonesia with low proficiency, while Myanmar, Cambodia, and Thailand with very low proficiency. Brunei, Laos, and Timor-Leste were not included in the table because they were not able to participate in EFTTI 2020. The next table shows the list of 11 Southeast Asian countries, as well as the starting level of instruction and number of teaching hours implemented by their respective English curricula. Six countries started their English instruction at grade one, and they were Singapore, the Philippines, Malaysia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Brunei. Four countries started their English instruction at grade seven, and they were Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, and Timor-Leste. Meanwhile, Vietnam was the only one country which started its English education at grade three. The table also shows that the number of teaching hours among Southeast Asian countries varied, but it is notable that relatively, those countries which started their English education at an earlier level and taught the language within a higher number of teaching hours are those countries that also achieved higher level of English proficiency. Nevertheless, it can be noticed that despite teaching English at an earlier level, Thailand and Myanmar were still in the lower proficiency band. In this case, we have to consider other factors which might have influenced the data such as the country's colonial history and teachers' expertise. For example, Thailand was not colonized by English-speaking countries unlike the Philippines and Singapore. In Myanmar, Burmese is the main language, and with this, studies revealed that additional difficulties are associated with the acquisition of the English language. Moreover, Myanmar did not offer specialized courses as part of their press service teacher education. 
This means that student teachers could not focus on attain expertise in a particular subject such as English. In Thailand, there were also a limited number of English teachers, so some teachers were forced to teach concepts beyond their expertise. For instance, reports show that some English teachers for 11 years old and below were forced to teach students aged 15 to 17. But in 2016, Thailand collaborated with the British Council and launched a training program which aimed to improve the expertise and strategies of English teachers in Thailand by training selected teachers who consequently would train the other teachers. In terms of teaching approach, Singapore, Thailand, and Brunei implemented the bilingual education system. The Republic of the Philippines adopted the K-12 curriculum together with the mother tongue-based multilingual education under the language and art multiliteracy curriculum. Meanwhile, Malaysia, Indonesia, Cambodia, Laos, and Timor Leste applied the communicative language teaching approach. Moreover, Indonesia also applied learner-centered and experience-based instruction. Laos used the audiolingual methods and Timor Leste suggested the use of students' native language as medium of instruction. On the other hand, Vietnam limited the words that must be learned in each grade. Its educational system focused on accuracy rather than fluency. Lastly, the English curriculum of Myanmar was based on the common European framework of, re of reference for languages to ensure that the English language was taught in context. Considering the data gathered, the following significant features of English curricula were pointed out. First, the bilingual education system. The data of 2010 Singapore Census of Population show that the percentage of residents who speak both English and other language in Singapore has increased by 13.5% compared to the previous data gathered in 2010. Apparently, Language Magazine reported that it even increased to 48.3% in 2020. Second, the language and arts multiliteracy curriculum in the Philippines. Its effectiveness is aligned with the timeless concept such as John Piaget's development learning theory. Since the curriculum applies the spiral progression way of learning, the children's cognitive skills in language are being well developed. Third, CT CLT activities in Malaysia were also proven to bring significant improvement to students' English-speaking skills, including grammar skills, vocabulary skills, pragmatic competence, and fluency. Meanwhile, some significant features from the other Southeast Asian countries include earlier English instruction, learner-centered and experience-based instruction, contextual teaching, and provision of continuous training for English teachers. Therefore, in light of the findings of the study, the following conclusions were drawn. In spite of differences, Southeast Asian countries have one thing in common. They continuously revise their English curricula for further development or improvement. The higher the number of teaching hours is the higher the possibility for students to achieve higher proficiency. Relatively, countries in which English instruction starts at an earlier level also tend to yield students with higher proficiency. However, other significant factors such as countries' colonial history and teachers' expertise may interfere. Third, the country's standing in EFEPI 2021 can serve as a basis to help identify the significant features of each curriculum which could be adapted by other countries to foster their English education. The researchers have also constructed the following recommendations. Firstly, Southeast Asian countries may participate really in on EFEPI for continuous monitoring of improvement. Next, countries with lower proficiency may recognize features of their existing curricula that can be improved. Finally, countries with lower proficiency may consider adopting the significant features of English curricula in Southeast Asian countries which performed well. And that concludes our presentation.
We believe that our research will hold a huge contribution in fostering English language education throughout the world. Once again, thank you very much.